Hello everybody, it's Mr. Ray here with our next lesson in grade 10 applied math. Uh, we're looking uh, at linear relations in our unit um, and uh, today we're going to look at further creating uh, equations of lines. This time instead of looking at a graph or a table of values uh, we're going to be looking at uh, creating that equation using points on the graph um, or just points in the table of values. So this is going to be strictly algebraic. Uh, you'll see what I mean by that. Um, here's just a review of some of the terminology. Linear relation, uh, any relation between two uh, types of data that uh, if we graphed it, it would be a straight line. Um, linear equation, and we're focusing really on just one form, and that's called the slope y-intercept form. Uh, that's the equation y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Okay, if we don't have the equation in that form, we want to rearrange it so that we get it in that form. We looked at that in uh, lesson two, I believe. Um, so uh, what we're going to be doing today, so slope and y-intercept, uh, we've gone through that several times. You can read that again if you'd like. Um, what we're going to, the main thing for today is, uh, if you remember when we looked at a graph, we picked two points um, and then we figured out the rise and the run based on creating a right triangle um, formed by those two points. Um, so we're kind of doing the same thing, but we're not doing it graphically. We're going to be using this formula here, and the formula doesn't have any fancy name or anything. It's just the uh, formula for slope uh, using two points. Um, so if we know two points, so this is pretty generic here. If you have a point one and a point two, um, they both have an x and y coordinate. So in order to avoid confusion which as to which x coordinate we're talking about, we give these x and y coordinates little subscripts. So for the point one, we give the x and y coordinates subscript one, x one, y one, and similarly for second point, we give the subscript two. So that point would have x two and y two as its uh, coordinates. And that's important when we use the formula because we're gonna be using all four of these and that's all we're gonna use. So the formula for slope, it really comes from what we did on the graph. It's the rise over the run. And the rise comes from the change in the y coordinates, and the run comes from the change in the x coordinates. So, um, if if you're given two points, you don't have to graph them to figure out the slope. You can just use this formula here. Okay, and that's what we're going to be focusing on that today. Um, so, there's a couple of types of uh, questions. Um, the equation of a line can be created from a graph by finding the slope. Now this time, instead of using the triangle on the graph, we could use this formula here. Um, and then you could just go identify from the graph, well, where's the y-intercept? Um, and it might be one of the points you're using, that's fine. Um, so you figure out the slope m from the formula. You just grab the, the value of b from the graph and you plug it in to make your equation very quickly. Okay, now say you're not working on the graph say you're given the slope and you're given a point. Well, you can still create the equation and what we're going to do there, so this time we just have one point and the slope given to us, so we don't have to have the subscripts because there's no confusion as to which x and y we're talking about. So what we're going to do is we start with the the basic generic equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, and at this point we know m we're given m, and we also know an x and a y value that work. So we actually know m, x, and y. So what we do is we plug all three of those values into this equation. The only thing that we don't know is b, but once we've uh, got y and m and x, we can solve for b, and then once we get b, well then we know m and b. So we can just plug that into the formula for the equation, okay? Now, what if you're given two points and you're not given the slope? Well, it's similar to above, except this time we're going to create, we're going to determine the slope 
uh, using this form that we've already talked about. So you've got your two points, you plug in your x1, y1, x2, y2, and uh, simplify, you get the slope. Okay, then we're going to substitute, just like we did in the last case, substitute the slope, m, and one of the two points. So this, this time you actually have a choice. So I could pick the first point or the second point, um, plug that in for the x and y values, and the m that we just calculated, and that's going to uh, help us get b. Um, and then we've got m and b, and we just plug them back in. Okay, so we're going to be practicing this. So if it seems confusing, hopefully the practice will um, make it seem a little bit uh, more understandable. Okay, so uh, in the first example, we're going to still use a graph, but this time we're going to figure out the slope algebraically. So um, if you look at the graph, we've got two points that are identified. We've got this point here, 0, 2, and we've got this point, uh, which is 4, 3. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll put those over here. I'll call, them, I'll call them point 1 and point 2, just so it relates back to the formula. Um, so I've got 0, 2, and I've got point 2 is 4, 3. Now, here's an interesting thing. That point, 0, 2, is the y-intercept. So before I forget that, I'm going to make it clear, P1 is the y-intercept. Therefore, B is equal to 2. So we won't actually have to calculate B like, like I've talked about earlier. If one of the points is the y-intercept, well, we just saved ourselves a whole lot of work trying to calculate B because it's right in front of our face. It's, it's this point here. You can always tell the y-intercept because the x-coordinate is 0. So that's something when you're given points or a point, you can always calculate. You can always quickly check is one of these the y-intercept. And most of the time it's not, but the times that it is, uh, it'll be a relief because it saves you some work. Okay, so we're going to use our formula here. Uh, first time, m equals. Now, be very careful. A lot of times we mix up the, you know, what side does the y's go on, what side do the x's go on. Well, it's always the y's on the top and the x's on the bottom. And, oops, that should be a 1. Now, to make it more meaningful, well, why is the y on the top? Well, the y is responsible for up and down, right? The y coordinate is your up and down coordinate. Um, and the rise, remember the formula, slope is equal to rise over run? Well, the rise is the change in the up and down. The run is the change in the left, right? So it makes sense that if the rise is on the top, that should be the y coordinate and um, leaving the x changing the x values on the bottom. So before I get my values here, I want to just go back to my points and I'll make this crystal clear. So this is my first point. So this is going to be x1 because it's point 1, y1. And this is x2 because it's point 2, y2. And then this is a really, it seems like it's, you know, why bother? But um, it, it saves a lot of grief if you mix these up. So y2 minus y1, that's 3 minus 2 on the top. And on the bottom, I have 4 minus 0. And when I simplify that, I get 1 over 4. Um, I could change that to 0.25 because it's exactly the same. I'll leave, well, this time, I'll just leave it as a quarter. So at this point, we've got, we've got our b value. We've got our m value. That's all we need always think about what what do we need to create the equation of a line and it's the slope and the y-intercept so now that we've got that here's my little here's the formula for the equation of a line and I know that based on the above work m is a quarter and b is equal to 2 so all I do is I substitute in m is a quarter and b is 2 don't forget the x. The x stays there. That You need an x and a y in the equation. Uh, plus 2. So there. That's our final equation. Okay. So let's do another example here. 
So this time we've got our two points. And you can see again, um, each of these examples, they use the y-intercept. So that's the point 0, 5. And this is the point 2, 1. Okay, so we do pretty much the same thing we did above here. So our first point is 0, 5. And I'll go ahead and do my little notation here so it's easier to do the formula. Point 2 is 2, 1. And that's x. Oops, I shouldn't have put a 2 there. Yeah, so the, the number relates to the point, right? This is x1, y1, because that's point 1. This is x2, y2, because it's point 2. Now, again, um, and you can see from the graph as well, that point is the y-intercept. So p1 is the y-intercept. Um, in case you didn't notice it from the graph, you can tell by the fact that the x-coordinate is 0. That also means it's the y-intercept. So in this case, b is equal to 5. Okay, so now we're going to calculate the slope with our new formula. m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's y2. So that's 1 minus 4. And the second one is 2 minus 0. So that's negative 3 over 2. Oops, that's not quite right. I don't know why I put a 5 there. It's 1 minus 5. I was thinking too far ahead there. So 1 minus 5 is negative 4 over 2. And that's equal to negative 2. Cool. So that's my slope. And I already have my y-intercept. Uh, from before. So again, I'll just put my template for the equation. Um, and I know that m is equal to negative 2, b is equal to 5. Now I just plug these in for m and b. y equals negative 2x plus 5. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so again, always remember to make the equation of a line, we need two things, the slope and the y-intercept. So you now in this case, we are kind of indirectly given the, the y-intercept because we had you know, two, uh, one of the points for each of them was the y-intercept. So that did save us some work. And then uh, to get the slope, we use our slope formula using the two points. Okay, so now we'll go to non-graph questions. So in this case, there's no visual indication of what the line looks like, just some... Um, number information. So in this question here, we're going to actually be determine the equation of a line again. This time they give, uh, they'll give us the slope and a single point that's on the line. Okay, so um, right, what is the equation of the line with slope equal 2? So right away there's the slope. So the slope is the m. So let's put that down right away. Um, and then this other point here, p, now, I don't have to put P1 anymore because it's just one point. So that's going to be 0, negative 2. And if you notice, uh, x coordinate of this point is 0, so that makes this the y-intercept. Okay, so we can bring that out right away. Is the y-intercept. So therefore, B is equal to negative 2. So we've got everything we need. That wasn't, we didn't even have to use our uh, uh, algebra to figure out B because B was kind of secretly given to us here. Okay, so we've got, uh, we got all our information we need. So we can make our equation, y equals mx plus b. We know that m is 2 and b is negative 2. Okay, and then just plug them in. y equals 2x plus negative 2, so that becomes minus 2. Always remember to change your signs to a single sign. So plus, neg plus negative becomes minus. Okay, uh, here's our next question. This time it's the equation of a line with slope of negative 0.5. 
passing through the point 43. So again, we they give us the slope directly. Um, now this time, that point 43 is not the y-intercept because the x-coordinate is not zero. So we have a little bit of work to do. So I'll just write it down as point 43. Okay, and remember the first coordinate is x, second coordinate y. I don't have to put x1 or x2 because there's only one point. Okay, so I've got x and a y value. I've got an m value. So what we do is we need to find our b value, our, our y-intercept. So the way we do that uh, is we plug in all three things we know. We know m is equal to negative 0.5. We know x is equal to 4 from the point, and y is equal to 3. So we get three pieces out of the four things here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. We've got three of those four things. The only thing we don't know is b, so we'll, able, we'll be able to figure out what b is. So uh, just be careful about plugging these in, that you put them in, in the right place. So y is 3, m is negative 0.5, x is 4. Make sure you put that in brackets because you're multiplying, and then plus b. Okay, so let's figure out what this is. So negative 0.5 times 4, using your calculator, that works out to negative 2 plus b. And then if we, we want to solve for b, which means we want b by itself. So we're going to add 2 to both sides. When we do that, we get 5 over here, and this negative 2 goes away. So b is equal to 5. Okay, so now we've got the slope and the y-intercept. So I'll just repeat that here. You don't have to repeat it as many times as I'm doing, but I want to make it clear. It's negative 0.5. I want to make it clear where the information is coming from. So now we can make our equation. So y equals mx, so negative 0.5x plus b, and that's our full equation. Okay, and remember the, the, the reason why we're so gung-ho about getting the equation is the equation is the most powerful form of a relation. It, it actually will allow you to predict any value you want, whereas if you had the information a graph or a table of values, it's not so, well it's definitely not as fast and it's not as accurate in a lot of cases too. So getting the equation is a real important goal for linear relations, okay? So let's go on to our next example. So this time, we actually have four uh, examples going on here. All of them, uh, we know two points on the line and we wanna create the equation, okay? So we're just gonna get lots of practice here. So, um, now, you notice this time, uh, they give us two points. Do we know the slope? Do we know the y-intercept? Well, definitely we don't know the slope, and but we will check the points to see if it's a y-intercept first. So, let's start off with calculation of the slope. So, before I do that, I want to go over to my points, give them the little labels here, x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay. Now, does it really matter which one you call point 1 and point 2? It doesn't. But you have to be consistent. You can't mix up the coordinates. So I could just as easily have picked, called this one x2, y2, and this one x1, y1. In the end, it's not going to make any difference in your calculations. But it's important that you do, do the subtractions in the right order. Uh, that's, that's why it's good to, to, to put your labels there. So remember, it's the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, um, so what's y2? It's right there, 11 minus 5 on the top. See how quick it is when you've got these little labels. Um, and then the, the bottom, x2, 3 minus x1 is 0, 3 minus 0. So 11 minus 6 is, th is sorry, 11 minus 5 is 6. 3 minus 0 is 3, so the slope is 2. Okay, now, normally we would just 
do what we did last time in the last example and plug in our like an x and a y value and the slope to get the b but remember it's important it, it can save you a lot of time going back and look what we've got here we've got out the y intercept so that is a big help that tells us that b is equal to 5. So now we've got b and we've got m. That's all we need. So y equals mx plus b. That's what we build from. We know that m is 2. We know that b is 5. So now we just plug in these numbers. So replace the m with 2. Replace the b with 5. And there's our equation. Now, one way you can always check your work, and I do this myself, is, and you can't do this on a test, but you can do it for your homework. You can create, you, you can graph this equation on Desmos or any other graphing app. Um, so just type in the equation, you'll see the line show up. And all you would do is go check, is make sure both of these points are on the line that you just created. And as long as they are, you know it's 100% correct. There's no way it could be wrong. Okay. Let's do our next one. So what's the equation of the line passing through these points? And I'm going to put my labels on right away. x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay, and this time I do a quick scan. And unfortunately, n neither of them are the y-intercept because I'd be looking for the 0 for the x, and it's not there. So this is going to be a little bit longer, not much. So here's my formula for the slope. Okay, so y2 minus y1, 11 minus 7. And x2 minus x1, 5 minus negative 3. Don't forget, if you haven't seen this yet, it's not 5 minus 3, it's 5 minus negative 3. So 11 minus 7 is 4, and 5 minus negative 3 is really 5 plus 3. So that's 8. So 4 over 8, and I can reduce that to 1 half or 0.5. Okay, um, and now we've got our m value. We've also got two points, so i got two possible selections of x and y's. So I'm going to choose one of those. Well, first of all, let's see our template for the equation. So our m is 1 half. Now, when I'm choosing my x and y to plug in here, I can, I, can, I'll, I can choose either one of these points. So, I mean, there's two things I use for. One is small numbers. The other thing is positive numbers. They're just easier to work with. So this one's a bit of, you know, this one's good because it's smaller numbers, but it's got a negative. And this one's got negative or larger numbers, but they're all positive. So it doesn't really matter in this case. There's no obvious. So I'm going to pick the first one. So x is equal to negative 3 and y is equal to 7. Now, what would happen if I used these for x and y, 5, 11? I get the exact same answer. Okay, so it's not going to affect um, the accuracy of your work. Just whatever seems easier to work with. Okay, so we've got y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to replace the m, the x, and the y. So what's the y? It's 7. What's the m? It's a half. What's the x? It's negative 3. Um, and the b, we don't know. We're trying to find that out. Okay, so I'm going to um, just work out this multiplication here. So this is equal to negative 3 over 2. I can... I could use that, or I could just make that into a decimal. Remember, you can only change it to a decimal if it's exact. So, and this is exact. Um, sometimes it's just easier to work with the decimals. So if I want to get b by itself, I'm going to have to add 1.5 to both sides. So when I do that, adding 1.5 to the left side gives me b. b is equal to 8.5. So now I've got, I figured out the slope up here. M, figure out the y-intercept here, and now it's just a matter of 
plugging those in. So here's my template. Yeah, that's one thing you should be writing down almost every question um, is y equals mx plus b. That's your, that's your, I always keep calling it a template. That's, you work from that uh, equation, okay? Uh, so in our case, m is one half. And again, you could have put 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and b is 8.5, or if you guys did it the fraction way, that would be 17 over two. So y is equal to one half x plus 8.5. Okay. So this is your typical type of question. They give you two points and they're not, neither one is the y-intercept. So you can see there's really two steps, well, three steps. First step is get the slope, get the m value. And then the second step, once you know the slope, the m, you take it and one of the other points, one of the points, and plug in your m, your x, and your y to give you the b value. And now you've got m and b. So the third step would be just plug those values in and create your equation. Okay, let's keep going. The more practice, the better for this type of thing, because it's a pretty common question. So here we've got our two points. I'll put my labels on right away. If you can do those labels, I can almost promise you, you'll make a lot fewer mistakes in this type of question. So m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, y2, 9 minus negative 12. So here's another double sign there. And then the x2 minus x1 is 5 minus 2. So 9 minus negative 12 is really 9 plus 12. So that's 21. And 5 minus 2 is 3. And I can simplify 21 over 3 to 7. Okay. So I've got my m value. Now I want to get my b value. I'm going to do the same thing I did above here. Start off with my template. And I know that m is equal to 7. And again, I can choose, uh, do I want to use this point or this point? And I think in this, in this question, I think this one seems like the more obvious uh, point to use because they're, they're both positive and they are smaller. Okay, so x is 5, y is 9. So now we plug all three of these back into here. So the m is sorry, the, the, the y is 9, the m is 7, the x is 5, and the b we don't know. So 7 times 5 is 35. 9 equals 35 plus b. So we actually subtract 35 from both sides. So 9 minus 35 is negative 26. And over here, it's we're just left with b. So there's our y-intercept, there's our slope. So let's create our equation with m equals seven and b equals negative 26. So it's y equals seven x plus negative 26, which is minus 26. Okay. And again, I could check this, you know, put this into a graphing software and, and double check that both of these points are on that line. Okay, um, last question for this page. Um, I've got my two points. None of them are the y-intercepts, so let's just label x1, y1, x2, y2. So I wanna create this, determine the slope. Hopefully at this point, you're starting to memorize this equation for the slope. So y2 minus y1, that's three minus three. x2 minus x1 is 15 minus three. So that's a zero over 12. And zero divided by anything is still zero. So the slope is zero, which you know, haven't seen a zero slope yet. So let's determine what the b value is. So we're going to start with y equals mx plus b. 
we know that m is zero, and we're going to choose a point of these two. So let's let's pick the three three. X equals three, y equals three. Um, so now we plug everything in. So y is three, m is zero, x is three, b we don't know. So three equals zero plus b. Well, we don't have to do too much there. That just means that b equals three. So let's create our equation, y equals mx plus b. We know that m is 0, and uh, our b value is 3. So that says that the equation is y equals 0x plus 3. But we don't really, 0 times anything is always 0. So this really adds nothing to the equation. So I can make it y equals 3. So this is kind of a unique equation, this is actually a horizontal line, which, which maybe when you saw that the slope is zero, that means it's flat, right? It's not going up to the right, it's not going down to the right, it's just level, okay? So that basically, what it says is every point on this line has a y-coordinate of three, because it doesn't go up or down. And you can see the, from the, these two points, these bo both have a y-coordinate of three, so you can, you know, you can see that both of these points are on this equation. It doesn't matter what x is, okay? Just every point has a three, x can be anything. Okay, uh, today's secret phrase is Christmas tree. Okay, uh, last page, last question. So it's a quick little uh, application question. I know sometimes people get uh, Sometimes their heart rates go up when they see word problems, but it's not that bad. Okay, so uh, let's just read the question. At the gym near her house, Sierra notices a chart that shows that the relationship between people's ages and their heart rates at different levels of exercise is linear. So basically the heart rate and their age is a linear relation. Okay, so she conducts her own experiments. She records the rates for herself and her mother. Sierra is 20 and her heart rate was 138, while her mother is 45 and has a heart rate of 123. Help Sierra create an equation to determine a person's heart rate at the same level of exercise given their age. Okay, so let's see what we have. So there's actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe do a little table of values. Because I've got some data from Sierra and her heart rate, and I've got some data for her mother and her heart rate. So um, now we probably should determine, should I, the two variables are the age and the heart rate. So you can ask, does your age determine your heart rate, or does your heart rate determine your age? And you could probably make an argument for both, but I think the one that sounds better is your heart rate depends on your age. So that means age would be in the left column, and your heart rate would be in the right column. So this is independent, dependent. Okay, now we only have two pieces of information, so it's not a big table. Uh, we have something for Sierra, and we have something for her mother. So Sierra is 20, and her heart rate was 138. And her mother's 45, and she has a heart rate of 123. So just looking at this, you can kind of tell if, you know, if this is a linear relation, and Sierra found something that said it was, uh, you can see as you get older, what's happening to her heart rate. Well, it, it looks like it's going down because her mother's older and her heart rate is lower than Sierra's. So you can kind of see that, you know, if you graph this relation, it would be going down to the right. Okay. So what we want to do is create an equation for this relation. And we're assuming it's linear because that's what she found. Um, so from this table of values, hopefully you can see that when you have a table of values, each one of these rows is a point. For the relation. Okay, so I have two points for the relation. Uh, 
I have uh, uh, the point for Sierra, and I'm going to put the in order here, independent, uh, comma, dependent. So t there'd be a point twenty one thirty eight, and the point representing her mother would be forty five one twenty three. Okay, so now it basically becomes, you know, from a word problem, it becomes a math problem where we want to find the equation of the line that goes through these two points. So this becomes exactly what we did in, in example three. Okay, um, so the first thing we do is we're going to do the formula for the slope with y2's x2 minus x. What am I doing? Let's go back. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, but I guess I should label these. That's x1, y1, x2, y2. And now I can plug in the numbers. So y2 is 123 minus y1, 138 over 45 minus 20. Okay, so 123 minus 138 is negative 15 and 45 minus 20 is 25 and I can reduce this you can hopefully see very quickly both of these numbers I could divide by 5 if I do that I get negative 3 over 5 okay and I can also make this into a decimal very nicely it doesn't I don't have to round now you know can you leave it as a fraction of course um, if you prefer to work with a decimal, you can change it to a decimal, but like I said, it had, you can't be chopping off decimals or rounding. It's got to be the exact same thing, okay? So there's the slope right there. And it makes sense. The slope is negative, and that kind of tells you that as you get older, your heart rate will be decreasing, and that's what the slope tells you, okay? Um, so now... Let's do like we did in the last example. Start off with our template. We've got our value for m is negative 0 0.6. We've also got our, um, you know, we need x and y. So we can choose either one of these. I'll pick the, you know, I'll pick the first one. x equals 20, y equals 138. Okay, and now we'll plug these three into this. So y is 138. m is negative 0 0.6, x is 20, and b we don't know yet. So what's negative 0.6 times 20? Well, use your calculator, you get negative 12. 138 still over here, and our b is what we want. So what, how, what do we have to do to get b all by itself? We have to add, do the opposite of this. We have to add 12 to both sides. When we do that, this side becomes 150. Okay, so there's our B value, so we're almost done. So we've got our M and our B, so Y equals MX plus B. We know that M is negative 0 0.6, B is 150. So, equation is um, M, negative 0 0.6, X plus 150. Now, anytime you have a negative sl slope, especially for an application question like this, I could actually switch the order of these terms and not affect the equation or anything about the relation. If I put 150 minus 0 0.6x, um, it's exactly the same. And it actually, in this context, it if you think about what this is telling you, it's saying that a person's heart rate, which is the Y, um, I guess I should have mentioned I was using X and Y up here. Um, a person's heart rate, which is the Y, is going to be 150. It starts off at 150, basically when you're zero. That's like the Y intercept, right? And every, every year you get older, your heart rate goes down by 0.6 beats per year. So when you see it this way, it actually seems more meaningful than if I change the term. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it like this. So let's put some words around this. 
Uh, we're supposed to help Sierra come up with an equation that relates uh, age to heart rate. So therefore, an equation to predict a person's heart rate So the heart rate, I'm going to mention the variable so I can relate it back to the equation. Uh, so predict a person's heart rate, y, based on their age. Which is x, the variable x, is y equals, and then the equation I just had up there, 150 minus 0 0.6x. Okay. Now it's kind of important to, to put this last little therefore statement because you've got to relate it back to we're helping Sierra come up with a you know have to relate this equation back to what what we're trying to do in the in the word question. So that would be the final answer and you could use this to predict, you know, um, a person's heart rate for any age. Just plug in their age here and you should get their heart rate. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, there's some homework attached to the lesson where you can practice this yourself. There'll be two more lessons in this unit. Uh, the next lesson, we're going to be looking at some properties of slopes. Uh, and then the final lesson will be looking at graphing equations, linear equations. Okay, so that's it. Hope this lesson helped, and uh, we'll see you on the next lesson.